And now we get to move on to the second early screening I saw this week, Now You See Me 2, directed by John Chu and starring Jesse Eisenberg, Morgan Freeman, and Mark Ruffalo. This picks up about a year or so after the events of the last movie, and the magicians known as the Four Horsemen have been hiding for some time, but now they are called back into action to expose the leader of a massive tech company for being a liar and a fraud. But through a wacky turn of events, they somehow end up in Macau and fall under the employment of Daniel Radcliffe, who is playing this crazy, filthy rich dude that wants them to steal this technological MacGuffin that apparently has the power to hack into any computer anywhere. I was a little bit surprised when I got a pass to see this movie, not because they were doing an early screening, but because I wasn't even aware this existed. I never saw the first movie, but I didn't really hear many good things about it. It got mixed reviews at best, but apparently it made a shitload of money. So I decided to go ahead and check out the first movie before seeing the sequel. And I still have no idea how it made so much goddamn money. I wouldn't say it's terrible or anything. It's okay, but that's just the problem. It's just okay. It does have a couple of decent chase scenes and a pretty strong cast. Woody Harrelson is especially entertaining, as he often is. But there's no real character development to speak of, which would probably explain why I could not for the life of me remember a single one of their names. And I had trouble figuring out really who we were supposed to root for, because these magicians are at least appearing likable enough, but they're also stealing shit, and... Like, so should we be cheering for the cops that are going after them, or should we be cheering for them for sticking it to the man? Th there's no real hero in this movie, and no real villain to speak of either. The story doesn't make a whole lot of sense. These four magicians are all drawn together purely just because the plot says so, and a lot of their magic tricks have obviously been enhanced by CGI to the point where they're not simple magic tricks anymore. They're literal magic. Like, there's no other way they could have possibly pulled this off. And that's not what's supposed to be happening. They're not wizards, but the movie certainly makes it look like they're wizards. A couple of the tricks they pull off are just completely preposterous. There's no way they could have done this shit. So in the end, I thought it was a decent but incredibly flawed movie. And somehow it made a shitload of money, so clearly there's something here, I'm just not seeing it. Which I suppose is this movie's greatest magic trick. As for the sequel, it's pretty much just more of the same. The plot still makes very little sense, there's still almost no character development. Isla Fisher declined to return for the sequel and was replaced by Lizzie Kaplan, and she is playing a different character, for what it's worth. Basically, her only character trait is quips. That's it. She says funny shit. Sometimes it's funny. And they put very little effort into introducing this character. She literally just waltzes right into Jesse Eisenberg's apartment at the beginning of the movie, and suddenly she's part of the group. She's Fisher's replacement. That's it. It's literally that simple. Many of their magic tricks still look like literal magic, which makes no fucking sense. The direction is kind of a mixed bag. The action sequences are okay, but not great. They get a little too jump cut happy and a bit too shaky at times. I guess I really shouldn't be surprised by the mediocre direction. This did come from the same guy who directed Gem and the Holograms, after all. Woody Harrelson is still entertaining, and this time around he gets to play two characters, because I guess they decided he has a twin brother now. Apparently, the filmmakers think one Woody Harrelson just isn't enough. Which is understandable. The movie does at least have a villain this time around, played by Daniel Radcliffe, and also another guy who I don't know if I want to mention because it might technically be a spoiler. The way the movie portrayed it, it seemed like it was meant to be a surprise, although... There are pictures of the guy on the movie's website, so apparently the marketing department didn't get that memo if it was supposed to be a surprise, but yeah. In any case, Radcliffe and the other guy both give a great performance. And Morgan Freeman is back, and as awesome as he always is, it's just a shame he doesn't really have more to do and a better movie to do it in. I really 
don't know what else to say. I thought this was a perfectly average thriller, much like the last movie. I think it's a little bit better. It does at least do a better job of clearly defining its heroes and villains, but there's still really nothing special about this. But apparently the studio expects it to make money hand over fist just like the last one because they've already greenlit Now You See Me 3. So clearly this series has a huge following and I'm just not a part of it. Which makes a recommendation a little tricky because I wouldn't have recommended the first movie but I am apparently the only person that did not see it in theaters. So I, I don't get it. I think that's the perfect way to end this. Now you see me too. I don't get it. And I think I am okay with not getting it. Next time I see you, I will probably be talking about the Warcraft movie. So until then, take care.